Welcome back. Our next guest sees short-term tailwinds ahead for the Canadian dollar as the U.S. dollar slips versus most major currencies. Let's get more from Adam Button. He's Chief Currency Strategist at Forex Live. Adam, thanks a lot uh, for joining us. I guess the most recent data point that would uh, significantly affect uh, both dollars, the U.S. dollar and the Canadian dollar, was the release of uh, U.S. inflation uh, numbers quite recently. Uh, t uh, take us through some of the reaction we saw in currency markets when those numbers were released. Well, I think it was extremely telling the re that release because we saw initially that rise in the U.S. dollar, we saw Treasury yields rise, and then it quickly reversed and we saw the, the dollar weaken off since then. And then we had PPI, which is the producer price index, the next day, and it was soft and, and everything fell further. So the market, I think, has been trying to tell us for a long time that inflation is yesterday's story. And that we're back in an era, 2010s era, of low inflation, low growth, and low interest rates. And whether we get there in starting in March or June or, or later this year, it doesn't really matter in the big, in the long term, in the currency market because we're headed back to that kind of regime, um, and that that I think eventually will mean that all that money that's locked up in U.S. dollars in short-term rates, um, in T-bills, will flow out and look for those opportunities in global growth as rates are cut in the U.S., where they have more room to cut elsewhere than elsewhere. So it sounds like uh, you believe the table is set for interest rate decreases and the relative pace and magnitude of those uh, decreases by different central banks is going to become a chief determinant of currency. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's been the, the trade in FX forever to start to get some of those divergences happening. You know, we'll see who's first off the starting line here. Again, America has the most room to cut. We should see some convergence towards some of those central banks that are still at zero. And then there'll be domestic factors that come into play, like in Canada, housing um, and some of the manufacturing issues in Europe. So, you know, ultimately, some of these central banks that might be slower off the starting line might ultimately have to cut more later because their economies will underperform. I'm just looking at what the market expects right now in my Bloomberg terminal. The market expects a U.S. rate cut on March the 20th and a Canadian rate cut uh, on April the 10th. And, and in both cases, obviously, this, uh, the market believes these will be the first of several rate cuts these year, uh, this year. Are markets uh, uh, too eager here? Are they pricing it in too soon? Yeah, I, I think they aren't. I mean, you know, one thing is what central banks should do and what they are going to do. I think the Bank of Canada, even by the March meeting, will have a pretty good idea what the Federal Reserve is going to do and, and might even pull the trigger sooner. That said, you know, there's an expression that generals like to fight the last war. Last spring, uh, Tiff Macklem was uh, loath uh, uh, to, to hike rates even further, and that led to some strength in housing that I don't think they liked. So we could see this spring them really try to clamp down on that and keep rates really higher than they should be. But ultimately, that's just going to mean more cuts later. And I don't think the, can bank, the Canadian dollar will particularly like if Tiff Macklem holds rates too high for too long. Uh, you mentioned the Canadian housing market uh, a, a short time ago. Elaborate on the relationship you see between the housing market and the Canadian dollar. Well, really, if we look at the long term, or really the last decade or so, the, the chief drivers of Canadian GDP growth have been housing and immigration. And I think both of those are going to be headwinds in the future, problems for the Canadian dollar. Um, certainly housing in the short term, we don't know how much it's going to fall. I think, you know, the spring market, there are a lot of people looking, investors especially looking for kind of exit liquidity in the Canadian housing market, hoping to get some better prices or at least quicker sales. Um, you know, I, I think we're really walking on the razor's edge there. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Rates have come down, so that should offer some help. Um, but the immigration story around the world is, is really, the tide is turning. Australia in December announced it was cutting immigration by half. So when Canada maybe follows in those footsteps, either before an election or after, uh, then I think we have some real problems for the Canadian dollar, you know, for the rest of the decade. Uh, why so? Uh, draw, draw the connection there to us uh, for us uh, between uh, immigration levels and uh, the value of the currency. 
Sure. I, I think a lot of the, really all the growth in Canada over the last 10 years has been simply population growth driving GDP. If you look at GDP per capita, Canada hasn't been capable of growing. Um, you know, there was a resource extraction sort of driver of growth for Canada for 100 years, but that is, is getting more and more difficult to do in Canada. And again, that, that, that immigration feeds right into housing, which has also been um, a main driver for Canadian growth. So if you're an investor from around the world and you're looking for places to invest, there really isn't anything that Canada is selling if there isn't, if there isn't per capita GDP growth and there isn't population growth. Um, the housing market is no longer rising. What exactly is Canada selling? So the Canadian dollar at this moment is trading at 74.4 cents U.S. Do you have a target uh, six months out, 12 months out? Yeah, I think if Canada gets through the housing market in the spring and it, and it firms up, I think there's a, probably a 5 or 6% upside in the Canadian dollar into the second half of the year. Uh, a lot of that would be based on U.S. dollar weaknesses as the you know, the market really cheers on and, and risk appetite does well. You know, we want to see China contribute as well. China's central bank met today, did not cut rates, meets again next week and may cut rates then. I think that would shore up commodity currency support. And, uh, you know, we'll just be watching a lot of the global growth dynamics, which I think are going to be equally important to the Canadian domestic dynamic. 